Greetings everyone. Welcome to the lecture on evolution of miniature art in India. This lecture is part of the ongoing series that we are continuing uh, that is introduction to art in the Indian subcontinent. We have discussed the evolution of miniature art uh, especially from Akbar's times onwards uh, and going back one can say that the artists of the Mughal atelier creatively assimilated the three styles that were indigenous, Persian and European. And as a result of this, the Mughal art school became a melting pot of vibrant styles of its time, yet it developed in a distinct way. Jahangir in Darbar from Jahangir Nama, which is attributed to Abul Hasan and Manohar, is an excellent painting which has been dated to around 1620. In this particular artwork, Jahangir is at the highest level in the center where the eyes move immediately from his figured frame to stunning white pillars that were surrounded by sparkling clear colors and also a brilliant frame that covered the overhead canopy as you can see in this visual. This is a visual of Jahangir in Darbar. And you can see how cleverly the details are captured in this small frame. On the right side, Khurram stood in attendance with his hands folded, flanked by his son Shuja, son of Mumtaz Mahal, who was raised in the court by Nur Jahan. The courtiers who are placed in this painting according to their ranks are easily identifiable as their portraiture is perfect and realistic. A Jesuit priest who had his name inscribed to aid easy identification is also depicted as he stood with other known nobles in the audience. Elephant and Horse add to the ceremonious importance of this event as the hands are raised and heads bow to salute Jahangir. Uh, another important example that one can give is that of Jahangir's dream uh, dated between 1618 to 22 by Abul Hasan given the title Nadir al-Zaman meaning the wonder of the age. This particular painting refers to the emperor's dream in which he was visited by Persian Safavid emperor Shah Abbas who was his rival and who possessed the much desired province of Kandahar. Interpreting it as a good omen, he had the court artist Abul Hasan paint the dream. As you can see in this visual that is of Jahangir's dream. In this specific painting, one can also analyze political fantasy uh, because the presence of Jahangir is quite dominating in this composition. The Persian Shah appears weak and vulnerable as he is embraced by Jahangir in Darbar. Uh, and Abul Hasan and Manohar, they both are supposed to have uh, made this uh, visual uh, dated around 1620. Both the kings stand on a globe and between them they hover over much of India and the Middle East. Once again, I am sharing this visual so that you can recollect all the important points that have just been shared with you as you can see on the screen right now. You can clearly see that how Jahangir seems to be in a more dominating uh, position whereas the other ruler is shown in a more subservient position. Also there are two animals that are shown in the painting uh, and here also the symbolism of their depiction is very important. The powerful lion on which Jahangir towers 
and the docile sheep on which the Persian Shah stands sharing a magnificent resplendent golden halo of the sun and moon held by two winged angels indicate uh, they are quite indicative of being inspired by the ongoing european art motifs as well as several imageries in the mughal court in the painting jahangir enthroned on an hour glass uh, that was made in 1625 symbolism is creatively applied by the court uh, painter bichitra uh, who can be seen on the emperor's uh, right hand holding a painting in his hand which again uh, probably was his offering to the emperor persian calligraphy Uh, adorned the top as well as bottom which in verse said that the shahs of this world may stand before him as jahangir prefers to have the darwishes portrait that resemble the ottoman sultan king james 1 of england also stands on the right hand with gifts for the mighty emperor so when we talk about the use of perspective in painting and also several other features like the shading or the presence of light and shade in the painting or use of horizons a use of three dimensional effect foreshortening all these came to be imbibed uh, as a result of european influence in mughal art which became all the more visible from the time of jahangir and shah jahan uh so when we talk about shah jahan uh, who succeeded the throne in 1628 uh, uh with this he not only uh, acquired a politically stable empire but also developed as uh, and also uh, de- developed a very fine atelier and uh, a great patronizer of artists shah jahan not only encouraged the artists in the atelier to create Uh, magnificent works that were both uh, an amalgamation of imagination as well as documentation there was also a lot of emphasis on idealization and also stylization was preferred over naturalistic rendering or accurate depiction the artworks that were produced under his supervision uh, they focused on subliminal qualities and also uh, beautification that was uh, to be achieved by the use of jewel like shining colors uh, and also intricate fine lines uh, so we see that some very uh, evolved concepts in the painting were now preferred and the visuals were meticulously created to highlight the multitude of interpretation that a single piece of artwork could offer his preference for sparkling jewels and gems and also his passion for monumental architecture uh, also the subject choice of paintings they all indicate uh, that he wanted to leave behind a rich legacy imperial portraits with glorious titles were painted to present the personality of the emperor also so when we talk about padshah nama that is the chronicles of the king uh, this is one of the most exuberant painting projects that were undertaken by the court atelier and it also reflects the extraordinary manuscript that presents the height that indian miniature painting had achieved so a process that had started from maybe humayun onwards kind of reached its high point The Mughal painting during this time depicted the impressive play of multiple perspectives, uh, uh, dif- use of different colors, as well as sophisticated compositions, to uh, highlight royal, historical, as well as mystical themes. The Mughal school of painting, which had embraced and presented uh, a blend of Uh, leading art traditions uh, 
even belonging to the contemporary world, began to inspire the European artists also of that time. Rembrandt, who was a famous European painter, was greatly inspired by the Mughal court painting and he made studies of several Indian paintings to master the use of delicate lines. So, it was not as if only Indian artists were learning from European painters. Uh, in fact, it was vice versa also. Shah Jahan's son Dara Shiko was a liberal uh, Mughal and his uh, great commitment to Sufism and his deep interest in Vedantic school of thought quite outstanding. And uh, in fact, his personality is uh, immortalized in a painting also uh, in which Dara Shiko is shown along with sages in a garden, a work that was probably uh, made around 1635. And in this uh, painting, the most important theme that emerges is that how Dara, a scholar uh, who knew many languages, um, uh, was uh, always amongst uh, the uh, amongst scholarly men. As you can see in this visual, Dara with sages. In fact, Dara also commissioned a special album of painting to gift his wife. Unfortunately, Dara due to his uh, great regard for literature, philosophy, religion um, was, was misinterpreted as a submissive personality and also uh, as not fit for political administration. And uh, in fact, uh, here there was a personality that was eclectic, philosophical and also quite inclusive in his approach to ideological issues as well as conflicts that were raging in contemporary times as is also vis visible in this particular uh, piece of art that has been shared. Now, next we can talk about Aurangzeb uh, in the war of succession that occurred during the lifetime of Shah Jahan, uh, he was defeated by, uh, uh, Dara was defeated by Aurangzeb and uh, as Aurangzeb came to power uh, to stimulate the political scenario uh, and uh, uh, many changes were made in cultural life as well. Later Mughal painting due to the gradual decline of state patronage, uh, ma many highly skilled artists left the Mughal atelier and in fact they were welcomed by provincial Mughal rulers uh, and these rulers imitated the Mughal royalties and wanted to recreate in paintings the glory of their dynasty as well as specific events of their court. So, the new political environment unsettled regional kingdoms and also the threat of English ascendancy changed the art scenario of India in 18th century. The painters thrived to suit the changing patrons, their aesthetic concerns or choice of subject matters as well as visual language underwent transformation. Eventually, the Mughal miniature style converged into other styles of the provincial as well as company school. Now, if we talk about the process of Mughal painting, most of the paintings that we have uh, seen were parts of manuscripts or royal albums, that is, they constituted the visual and the text. Uh, that was uh, shared in a given format and for ma making book painting uh, specific processes were adopted. For example, there were sheets of handmade paper that were prepared and they were cut to match the size of the manuscript. Then designated space was left for the artist to fill it with a suitable visual composition. So, therefore, it was decided beforehand only that this particular theme needs a visual composition and hence a blank page had to be left for that. Then the pages were ruled and filled with text 
once the text had been written, it was given to the artist who would then compose a visual representation of the text. The artist was, uh, would then begin from the stage of making the composition that was Taraha to portraits that is Chehra Nama to the final stage of colouring that was Ranga Mizi. And uh, this also involved uh, great information and detailing as, as far as colour and technique of Mughal painting was concerned. The Mughal paintings were made on handmade paper which was specially prepared for this purpose. The colours were more or less opaque and they were obtained from natural sources either by grinding or by mixing pigments to uh, get a perfect shade of colour. The paint was then applied using different kinds of brushes which were made of hair of squirrels or kittens and there were specific workshops where painting was a, a team effort uh, in which there were a group of artists who would participate. Uh, so, some of them would be doing drafting, drawing, grinding and filling in of colours. So, what we can say is that the Mughal miniature painting involved lot of collaboration as well as specialization, adding of detailing uh, and uh, the artwork produced during the early Mughal phase was collaborative efforts of this team of artists and each one based on his specialization would undertake specific aspect of the painting whereas the other tasks would be delegated to specific artists. There are several records which also tell us that the artists were given incentives as well as increments in their salary according to the kind of work they did. The recorded names of the master artists also inform us of the position that they enjoyed in the royal atelier. Once the painting was complete, a gate, a gemstone was used to burnish the work to set the colours and give desired radiance or glow to the painting. Some of the pigments and colours uh, achieved from those were like vermilion from cinnabar, then ultramarine from lapis lazuli, very bright yellow could be attained from orpiment. Shells were ground, grounded specifically for making white and lamp black was made from charcoal. Gold and silver powders were also mixed with colours or they were sprinkled to add extravagance to any piece of art. Uh, another example that one can give is that of Noah's Ark which is from a dispersed Diwane Hafiz painted manuscript of 1590. In this, there is use of subdued colour palette and uh, Prophet Noah is in the ark which is carrying animals in pairs so that they may continue to flourish and procreate after the threatening flood that had been sent by God to punish humans for their misdeeds as you can see in this visual of Noah's Ark. You can see lot of movement, lot of instability, uh, lot of chaos also that is uh, visible in this particular uh, uh, piece of art in order to indicate uh, catastrophe. In this painting, the sons of Noah are in the act of throwing Iblis that was the devil who had come to destroy the ark. So, the use of pure white and subtle shades of red, blue and yellow was deliberately made and uh, the vertical perspective also infuses the painting with the a heightened element of dramatic energy. Uh, so, having discussed uh, with you some of the examples uh, of Mughal miniature art as they evolved under different emperors, one can say that Mughal miniature painting was constantly 
evolving. Thank you.